So how does reincarnation really work? Number one rule. It is not a the same thing for everybody. It is a creative endeavor. It is something that you do in order to evolve. And so it's, it doesn't play by the rules that people wanted to play to. Now, what gives me the right to think that I can talk about how reincarnation really works? What gives me that right is that I've done around 2,000 past life regressions since 2010. And I've seen a lot of people uh, describe a lot of past lives, past deaths going into the afterlife, also figuring out what future life they need to have, and explaining how that works along with life purpose and so forth. So. I'm a practitioner of quantum healing hypnosis, hypnosis technique, sorry. And, um, and that technique was de developed by the late Dolores Cannon, who authored over 20 books around uh, past life regression and metaphysics, all kinds of stuff, aliens, whatnot. And so I learned her method after reading the Convoluted Universe uh, series of books by Dolores Cannon. And because when I read these stories of ancient Egypt, Atlantis, other planets, past lives as animals or trees or all kinds of things, I was like, I need to get into this. I need to find out about this. So the thing is, number one, you are a soul, and as a soul, you are part of the oneness of all that is. And so, in a way, everything that comes down below the level of oneness, you could call it God, you could call it spirit, whatever. Anything lower than that, on the totem pole, we could see as kind of an illusion, uh, a dream in the mind of God, whatever. Yeah, I t typically don't like the word God, but I don't really have a good alternative, so I use it. But it, 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 when I'm saying God, I'm not talking about some dude with a beard on a throne sitting on a cloud. Um, I'm talking about the consciousness, the one consciousness that is everything. That everything that exists is really just an echo of that one consciousness, a manifestation of that one consciousness. And so the things that can exist out of that one consciousness are infinite. There are no rules to what can exist in reality um, because there could be multiple realities. So anyway, from what I've seen in my work, what happens is that we as souls, as aspects of the one, we have a certain evolutionary process that can be helped by temporarily forgetting who we are, going into a certain character, playing that character out. And so I liken it to the idea of, I always use the example, like you're Bruce Lee and you're this ultimate Kung Fu master. And one-to-one, -one, you defeat anybody, let's say. Um, and so what is the next step? 
Well, the next step could be now do it blindfolded. So the analogy is that as a soul, you know who you are, you know your weak points, you know what you need to work on, but you don't really have the resistance in that realm, that spiritual realm, uh, to test yourself. You don't, you're just so aligned with doing the right thing at all times that, you know, you're just in that mode that it would be ridiculous to think of doing wrong things, bad things, suboptimal things. So you kind of have to forget who you are. And you, so you pick a, a body, a family, a lifetime. And you pick that because you want to have certain attributes and you want to have certain challenges. So let's say you pick um, somebody that has a really genius mind that somebody who could be the next Einstein, let's say. But you pick that person coming from a very uneducated family that will not support your educational goals and where you live in an area that where you're disadvantaged in other ways. And so you set this all up as can I break the mold and like not go into total opposition to my family, not make a big drama, but also stay true to my life purpose. And so you might be dealing with issues like conformity versus authentic self-expression. Most of us are dealing with that in our own ways. Dealing with feelings of inferiority versus actual talent. A lot of us are dealing with that too. Um, and so it, it's like, and then for example, when we come into the, the feeling of having the talent, having that intelligence, then do we, for example, do we forget where we came from or do we honor where we came from? Do we let where we came from hold us back? Um, do we go into opposition in ways that we don't need to? Um, so anyway, we pick a life where there is opportunity and there are challenges. And so the whole challenge of that life is to seize the opportunity to work on the challenges, to overcome barriers, right? And so usually past lives are kind of like that. Now, sometimes it's to break a pattern, which could be very similar to what I just mentioned. But for example, I've had people come in in a dysfunctional relationship or marriage, whatever, and and then they go into past lives where, for example, they keep marrying this person and having the same issues. They get attracted for the same reasons they go through the same drama. It's a complete repeat over and over and over. And so what happens with these people is ideally they come back and they break the cycle. And depending on the person, breaking the cycle could be cutting through all the bullshit and realizing that you really love each other and ending lifetimes of agony, fighting, whatever, discord. Or it could be just kind of saying, hey, we don't need to be together. And like Dolores Cannon used to say, just tear up the contract with that person 
and be in a mode of like, hey, we, we tried, we worked on it, it didn't work, I'm releasing you. You know, they it, you release each other and you end the pattern. When you do past life regression hypnosis, what happens a lot of times is that you see where you've been stuck for many lifetimes. And you could be stuck on negative issues like anger issues or addiction issues or all kinds of stuff. But you could also be stuck on false humility and not manifesting your talents. That's a bummer too. So, you know, sometimes it's about having more ego, a healthier ego that allows you to go out and do what you need to do. And sometimes it's about chilling that ego out and finding the ability to flow with your surroundings. Now, in different lifetimes, your challenges are going to be different. Okay, so how does reincarnation work? Well, you have something you need to learn. You go and take that class. And ideally, you do well. The class is a life. Now, here's one thing that comes up a lot. And that is that people think that they, as a human ego, are in control of the reincarnation process. You are not in control of it. Now, you can benefit the process by learning your lessons, by releasing certain things, by embodying certain things, by completing your life mission. Absolutely. That's what you can do. But what you can't do is sit here right now and decide, I'm never coming back. I always tell people when they say, I never want to come back. I never want to reincarnate on Earth. I always say, well, that's the best way to reincarnate on Earth. Because you're, you're opposing divine will. And plus, the you, the, the incarnational personality that's saying that, is not your soul that makes the decision after this life. Now, another thing is that you can reincarnate into anything from my experience with my clients. You can reincarnate into the past. Like your future life could be in ancient Rome um, because... Apparently, in these realms, there is no time. And don't ask me to conceptualize that because I think it's impossible. Um, you can reincarnate into a different species on a different planet in non-physical realms. I mean, it's endless. You know, it's so funny when people say, well, reincarnation can't be true because... Where did all the extra souls come from on Earth? And I always say, well, like the rest of the universe, the multiverse, other dimensions. Well, you know, there's plenty of extra souls. You know, we could have a trillion hu humans on Earth. Um, you know, if it's just about numbers of souls existing in the universe. So, the the... The thing is, if we go back to it's all oneness, it's all God creating everything. Well, there's no limit to what God, he, she, it could create. Um, and when it comes down to it, you are that creator. Not your ego so much, but what you really are. So... Why would somebody want to find out about their past lives and all this stuff? Basically, because the next level of human evolution, oh, there's a topic for a new video, is 
Well, at least part of it involves remembering where you come from. Basically, to go to the next dimension, that's what will be part of it. Like, when my clients report dying in a past life and they leave their body, and sometimes I'll ask them, can you see past lives from this position? Now, right when they've left the body, usually they can't. You know, they're doing other things. But eventually they get to a point where they could see all their past lives. They get a really clear idea of who they are. And there's one thing that's interesting is there's kind of a core essence that flows through all of the lives. And there's a creativity. And um, so, but it all comes down to the oneness and that we are expressions of the oneness. And it's like the oneness, God, is evolving through us dealing with limitation, a limitation that doesn't exist in these other realms. So you can reincarnate as a tree, as a horse, as an alien from 27,000 galaxies from here, um, anything. You can be anything that you can imagine and uh, an infinite number of things that you cannot even imagine. So as you tap into this life purpose and you tap into knowing where you're from, um, then there's an, an expanded consciousness where you identify as the soul who reincarnates rather than as the reincarnated entity. Instead of being this person, you are this energy inhabiting the person, and it's a big leap. And, and so spirituality is really about bringing your identity up an octave into being the soul in your core identity rather than being the lost human confused in this realm of separation. And so, anyway, that's some of what reincarnation is all about. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to cover the whole thing in uh, less than 20 minutes. But if you would like me to do some specific videos on specific questions around this, please put them in the comments and I look forward to reading them and hopefully responding with some videos specifically about that. Thank you very much for bearing with me and please like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps a lot and I'll talk to you very soon. Thanks. Bye.